What's up, party animals? My name is Kezzy. I have been in the furry fandom for like 10 years now, but it wasn't always me, fursuits, and fursonas. I have gone through so many different character designs. The furry fandom has been in my life for a long time, and it has been wild. So today, I'm telling you the story of how I became a furry. Starting out in the furry fandom, I was a very young age when I realized that I thought animals were way cooler than any person could be. Uh, I started out like, I, I started out being more into cats. Um, I had like three cats at home. It was just like, mm, yes, animals. Grew up reading Garfield and stuff like that. But uh, like I'd tell kids at the bus stop, oh, my ancestor married a cat not really realizing the connotation with that, but I said it anyway because I'm like, yes, I'm part cat. I am an animal through and through. And uh, so yeah, that was in like kindergarten. Um, I remember my earliest drawings looking something like this, where it would be on two legs. I wouldn't draw cats normally, no. Anytime I wanted to draw a cat, they were on feet, on their back legs, just like me. At this time, of course, I didn't know what a furry was. I just thought, oh, these are cute, let's keep drawing them. And so that was like kind of like the earliest intro to the fandom. But then everything changed in middle school. Now, I was friends with weeaboos. And those people are what kind of taught me a lot about the internet. And I was part of like this little graphic design program that taught me how to make vector art using a keyboard and a mouse. Um, I, we used a program called Inkscape, highly recommend, super good software. You don't need a lot other than the program itself and a okay computer. These weeaboo friends taught me about anime and I wasn't really into anime itself, but I loved, loved, loved the art style and I thought it was so much better than like, you know, the Western cartoons and stuff like that and I always wanted to emulate it. And in my path through looking for anime, I found something, little, little unknown thing called hentai. And uh, in finding that, I'm like, ooh, this is cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, going through some changes. This makes my brain do things. And then from hentai, I actually found furry hentai. And so that's kind of where I got my start in the fandom. But I didn't know what the furry fandom was still. I just thought, ooh, animal people. These are cool and making my brain do funny f somersaults. Let's keep looking at them. And that led me to a website called Fur Nation. And that's when I really learned about what a furry was. They had this chat room and I was drawn to that immediately. I would go there every day, talk to all sorts of people. Um, they're probably the reason I'm a, I'm a musician at all today because they kind of pushed me towards doing that. And I think that's one of the coolest things. Like here's my first persona. I drew this myself. Here is something someone in that chat room made. They drew it for me for free. And it's still like one of my favorite pieces of art just at this point because of how old it is and how iconic it was to my life. And it just meant so much to me. The fandom has definitely been super life-changing for me. During this time, I actually went to something called Youth Group. And Youth Group is this little Christian kind of after-school program for adolescents and they kind of, you know, teach Jesus in a fun way. And through that, I kind of like, I was actually having a bad time with an adult in this chat room. Someone was doing things they definitely should not have been doing to someone of my age. And things weren't going well. And thankfully, Jesus saved me, literally saved me from this because this little Christian group taught me sex is bad and you're gonna go to hell if you even think about a titty. And so that scared the bejesus out of me. I couldn't, I couldn't stay in the fandom. I actually hated the fandom because of how sexually overwhelming it was and how horny everybody was and how bad it was. And I ended up becoming, um, now I didn't really ally myself with the burned furs, but I was effectively a burned fur. I thought furries were disgusting degenerates and I hated them. But I could never ever leave the furry fandom completely. But I did try. I, I was so mad, I shredded all of my artwork one by one, each and every one of my old original drawings through the shredder. It is just, it, it was heartbreaking. The only reason I still have some of my old digital art was because it was still on Facebook. 
<laughs> so yeah, all of my old art gone forever into the shredder, into the dump. It's just, ugh, it sucks now, but at the time, this was good because I was in some not great places, especially for my age. And so with this whole Jesus thing, I'm like, well, you know, let's do something cool. Let's have something fun go on that isn't, you know, this like horny sex fest. And, you know, being as young as I was and being right in the middle of that, it just wasn't a good place for me. As time went on, I actually eventually realized that, well, the church is actually a cult led by a bunch of bigots because they actually started talking uh, really bad things about some of my friends who were gay or who were a different religion. And I was like, well, this isn't, this isn't something that Jesus would do. The Jesus I know would love everybody and let them go on their own path and learn their own important things to make the world a better place. And who are you to say that like, how people should be living their life? And they started throwing, shoving that down my throat. Like I need to control how people live their life. And that just, that just didn't sit well with me. And also, I was probably gay, but didn't know it yet. And that just wasn't good either. I leave the youth group, I leave religion for that time, and I still was left with this big Jesus-shaped hole in my heart. And I really, really, really wanted something to fill that void. And what I ended up finding was My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. And that show, holy crap, that show taught me, it taught me to be caring and kind. And I, that was huge for me. You know, having a sense of community like that was amazing. Um, I had like a really, really tight knit group, found myself another chat room. And it was, you know, it wasn't quite furry, but it wasn't not furry either. And so there was a lot that I liked about it because you know, it was like the little pony is on four legs, but a lot of the artwork would have them on two legs. And so it was like, there's a good mix of furry, but it wasn't blatantly furry. And so I still had that disconnect, so it kind of eased me back into the fandom and eased me back into that kind of world. Now, with My Little Pony bringing a sense of community into my life, the one biggest thing that I did that I remember doing was this thing called Friday Night Watch Parties. And it was when me and all of my friends got together and we would stay up all night until seven in the morning when the new episode aired on Saturday. And we would just party and have fun. You know, quickly it ended up turning into something that wasn't about My Little Pony, but it was about hanging out. And we would just kind of like wrap up the day with the new episode and it was super fun. And then after the episode was done, we'd all pass out because wow, being up until 7 a.m. was not smart, but it was easy. Cause you know, it was like 17, 16, whatever. I was young. Now, because of this, these watch parties, you know, they weren't part of the My Little Pony thing for a while. And I actually ended up uh, finding <laughs> after high school, I ended up getting into weed. Uh, this was something that made the Friday night parties so much more fun because I was doing something edgy and stuff like that. And so it was a super wild time, but then my parents caught wind of it and they were not fans of that. I ended up getting kicked out and I had to move away and start living like as an adult. And I really, really, really got thrown into something that just I was not ready for. So fandoms actually had to take like a way back burner. I couldn't stay in fandoms anymore because you know, I had to work two jobs. I had to live in houses that were infested with slugs. I wasn't in a great place. So I was super busy being an adult. And it was only until I ended up working at a company that did inventory for Walmarts. And this job, they'd, tr they'd have us go from hotel to hotel and this place, they had me staying in a variety of hotels in a variety of cities for a variety of lengths of time. And with all of this staying in weird places, doing weird things, I ended up bonding with these people. And these were not like cream of the crop people. Uh, we would party every chance we could because we were all in these weird hotel rooms and every other night, you know, someone would end up being the designated r party room and we'd all pile into their room, do our thing, have fun, and then head our way home or our head our way to their, our own rooms to sleep and stuff like that. And this was so much fun. Now, during all of this, I actually, <laughs> I actually managed to get acid. And this is something that absolutely put me on a completely different path because I ended up having the hotel room to myself for a whole night, no, no work tomorrow. I was just, the next day I was sitting in a van going home. So I thought, you know what, let's take this and see what happens. And I ended up having my laptop with me. And at this time, 
I was actually interested in something called Furry IRL. It was a subreddit about furry memes. And while I wasn't really spending a lot of active time doing furry things, I definitely enjoyed watching what was happening. You know, being on the sidelines of the furry fandom was still super fun, and I just loved to watch what was happening. But a name I kept hearing getting tossed around was Majira Strawberry. And this person was a furry YouTuber that I just never really heard of until that website. And so on this trip I took, I decided, you know what? Let's spend it watching this video. Let, you know, let's, let, let's see what this Majira guy is all about. And so I watch his first video, and then I watch his second video, and then his third, and fourth, and fifth, and so on, and so forth, and eventually, I've watched all his videos and the sun's up. And I'm still, you know, like, whoa, you know, tripping out and stuff like this, but I sit there and I think like, whoa, this is it. This is what I wanna do with my entire life. I wanna be a furry. And so, that was the kind of decision that really set me in stone of like, you know, let's start creating a persona. Let's start doing this like YouTube thing. Cause at the time I was a producer and I didn't really know where to go with my music. And I thought, well, there's not enough music in the fandom. So we'll do that. And so after each and every one of these little things, I just start building up and I get full force into it because that's just what I do. I love doing things. And you know, with COVID that kind of really sucked. and. I haven't had a lot of fun this year, but it's still, I'm so excited to get to do so many things. Watching Majira's channel and all the other fur YouTubers, seeing what they got to do, that was inspiring. You know, not even, you don't even need a fursuit or a character or any of that. Just the friendships people make in this community. You can always find someone who is at your level in the furry fandom. You know, it's 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 so unifying in such a unique way because you don't have you don't have to be someone specific to like furry. It's just kind of like ah, it's so hard to explain and I love it and I I would tell you, you know, what cemented me into the fandom with all the conventions and parties I've been to, but I think that's probably good for another video. So I guess that's it. That's my story of how I became a furry. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.